Does your man flirt with other women on social media? Do you feel disrespected or upset because he's liking or commenting on other women's selfies and photos? Well, then stay right here because in this video, I'm going to explain the differences between harmless flirting and when things are starting to go too far. Don't go anywhere because we're starting right now. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borello and I'm a psychologist and a relationship coach. This channel is all about helping you build great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love. So if you're interested in making your love life the best part of your life, start now by clicking the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you aren't missing anything. Okay, let's talk about social media flirting. First, what is flirting? Well, according to the leading researchers in the field, Flirting is defined as ambiguous, goal-motivated behaviors that can be, but aren't restricted to being interpreted as sexually motivated. And it's the motivations and intentions behind the flirting that distinguish playful flirting from cheating. But make no mistake about it, flirting always serves a purpose. For example, there is playfully motivated flirting between two people who know one another. This is playful bantering and teasing that's enjoyable to both parties and motivated by fun. It's a harmless and innocent activity that makes neither party uncomfortable. And then there is esteem motivated flirting that is aimed at making another person feel good and boost their self-esteem. These are complimentary and non-threatening comments such as telling someone that they look great today or that you really like that color on them, or that you think a man looks handsome in his suit today. Again, the motivation is simply to compliment and make another person feel good. So in this case, men and women engage in flirting because it is flattering and it makes them feel attractive or to make another person feel better about themselves. And so far, these are innocent enough. But if we take it a step further, there's exploring motivated and sexually motivated flirting. And this is when someone is trying to be ambiguous or indirectly conveying romantic or sexual interest with a lowered risk of rejection. So when I flirt with someone, I am inviting the other person to flirt back. When I put something out there, such as a longer gaze or sustained eye contact or a playful bantering, I'm gauging and waiting for a response. I'm waiting to see if they are open or if they're going to ignore the flirtation or block it and send some kind of I'm not interested message. And this is the most important part. These interactions are happening between two people who know one another, and it's happening in person and privately. Now, let's bring social media like Facebook and Instagram into the mix, and I'll explain how this changes everything. So I asked these questions on Facebook a few days ago, and it started a very vibrant debate. Here are the questions. If a man likes a woman's selfie or photo on Facebook or Instagram, is that considered flirting? And if you are in a relationship, is that considered disrespectful? So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and let's start a debate here too. And I know that people have differing opinions, so just be respectful of one another. So I asked these questions because at first, I didn't think liking someone's photos was considered flirting. So my first inclination was to think that it wasn't a big deal. But then a few of my friends offered a completely different interpretation. And I'll share that with you in a second. But the first question, if a man likes a woman's photo on Facebook or Instagram, is that flirting with her? Well, it depends on three things. First, what is the nature of the photo? Second, do you even know that person? And third, what is the purpose or motivation or intention behind the like? If it's a random woman that you don't know posing in a tiny bikini, what is the intention behind the like? What do you want her to feel when she sees that you liked her photo? That's the motivation behind the like. Is she going to feel like you're flirting? And, and I don't even want to get into the comments. Like, that's a whole nother level of flirting. The second part, is it disrespectful to your significant other if you're liking other women's photos and selfies on social media? And Sarah, a good friend of mine, gave a wonderful response on Facebook. And she said, I think it's disrespectful and hurtful. Obviously, not if it's a close family friend or childhood friend, etc. But if a guy is going on Instagram and liking a bunch of random girl selfies or sexy gym poses or swimsuit pictures, why? What's the point of that? Supporting them? I don't think so. I think it's incredibly disrespectful and it has nothing to do with insecurity for me. 
It's just a basic principle. You love someone, don't do anything to put them in a position to feel that they aren't the one who takes your breath away or make them feel that anything short of special. So she brings up some excellent points that really point to the reasons it can be disrespectful. So when is the line crossed? Look, couples have varying degrees of comfort with flirting. The playful bantering among friends that one couple finds amusing is uncomfortable and threatening to another couple. So that's the first complication here. Everyone is different. But here are the confounding variables that make social media flirting so much more damaging to relationships. The first reason is intention. See, innocent or esteemed flirting that might happen between coworkers or colleagues or classmates in real life can serve the purpose of making someone you know feel good. And if it's not welcome, the person who has been flirted with can put an end to it and privately. The difference with social media, if I like a woman's photo on Instagram and leave a comment saying, wow, you're hot, to a woman that I've never met, what is the intention here? I don't have a real friendship. The intention isn't the same as the playful esteem flirting with someone that you see in person and talk to one-on-one. -on -one. And you're not blasting your flirtation all over the internet for all of your friends and connections to see. And if I have a girlfriend or a wife, she too can see my comment. Again, everyone is different, but it's very easy to understand how or why she might feel disrespected by that. There's a big difference between innocent flirting between coworkers and flirting with a stranger online. The motivation is different and the outcome is different. That's why it's important to talk to your partner and agree upon boundaries acceptable to you both. And if either partner violates a promise or commitment that you've made to the other, then you have a problem regardless. And besides violating a promise or commitment, here are the additional signs that your flirting has gone too far. Number one, when you think about flirting with the same person, let's face it, flirting is fun and can make us feel good. But daydreaming and reminiscing and looking forward to playful flirtations with one person is a sign that more is developing. So ask this question. Do you often catch yourself thinking about the flirtatious friend when they're not near you? If you answer yes, it's time to reevaluate your situation because you're starting to catch some feelings. Number two, when you keep your flirtatious behavior secret. If the flirting, either online or in person, is kept a secret from your partner, your family, your friends, and your coworkers, ask yourself why. See, not telling your sensitive partner about the attractive UPS person you flirt with is one thing, but when you're uncomfortable telling your best friend about your flirting, you probably cross a line. Number three, when you feel guilty about it. Would your partner feel betrayed if they could read your mind and experience your feelings when you are flirting with your friend? And are you guilt-ridden after flirting because you enjoyed it so much? If so, perhaps your friendship is bordering on inappropriate and it's time to stop it now. Number four, when you share emotional intimacy. We all need the love and acceptance and appreciation of another person. And when these intimacy needs are not met, we are lonely regardless of our relationship status. Loneliness is your heart craving for intimacy and connection but not having anyone willing to connect. And this can certainly occur when we're single and alone, but it also occurs in relationships where one or both partners are emotionally unavailable. The danger of flirting is that friendly bantering and flirting can get us to open up and share more of our thoughts and emotions. What starts off as playful friendship then becomes the foundation of an emotionally intimate relationship. If you find that you share more of your emotions with your flirtatious friend because they understand you better, then you've already moved into dangerous territory. By the way, I've made other videos on how to quickly recognize red flags in new relationships. Click here to watch that video now, or click here to learn the three most common ways that men trick women. I'll see you in the next one.